Day Tooth Parlor presents the Mel Blanc Show with Mary Jane Croft, Joe Kearns, Jerry Hausner, Hans Conried, Earl Ross, the sportsman, Victor Miller and his orchestra, and starring the creator of The Voice of Bugs Bunny. Hey. What's up, Doc? Yes, Colgate Tooth Powder for a breath that's sweet and teeth that sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show with Mel playing his new character, Zookie. Hello, everybody, 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 everybody. Hi. And starring himself in person, Mel Blanc. Hi, folks. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. <laughs> Close to Thanksgiving, and in Mel Blanc's little town, courageous suitors are taking advantage of the holiday spirit to approach prospective fathers-in-law on a delicate subject. In one house, where Sam Green has asked Mr. Brown if he may marry his daughter, Mr. Brown is saying, Sam Green, I'm going to set the date next week. And in another house, where Henry Adams has asked Mr. Jones if he may marry his daughter, Mr. Jones is saying, Henry Adams, I'm going to make you a junior partner in my firm. And in the Colby house, where Mel Blank has asked Mr. Colby if he may marry his daughter, Betty, Mr. Colby is saying, Mel Blank, I'm going to break every bone in your body. <laughs> Thanksgiving Eve, and in order to get in Mr. Colby's good graces again, Mel Blank is holding a Thanksgiving party in his fix-it shop. He has invited a few of his friends for Thanksgiving dinner. Right now, we find Mel and his girl, Betty, setting the table. Knife, plate, fork. Knife, plate, fork. Knife, fork. (laughs) Mel, those were the last two plates. Now what will you do? Oh, don't worry. Knife, Piece of plate, fork. <laughs> Knife, piece of plate, fork. Gosh, what a beautiful table. Yes, there's the celery stalks, stuffed olives, candied yams, cranberry sauce, all the fixings. And in the center, that great big beautiful 15-pound salami. <laughs> but Mel, Father will be awfully mad. He's expecting turkey. Oh, I took care of that. I scooped out the center of the salami and I stuffed it with chestnut dressing. And besides, Betty... What difference does it make? Salami or turkey? It's the spirit of Thanksgiving that counts. But, Mel... Anyway, the orphan's home needed the turkey much more than I did. Oh, darling, I love you for giving the turkey to the orphan's home. You always were a softie for children. Well, Betty, you know how I feel about us. Someday we'll get married and we'll have a little two-room house. (laughs) Yes. Then after a while, we'll add another room. Betty, I refuse to have your father live with us. Darling, I mean children. After we get married, there's no reason why we can't have three, four, or five. Yeah, and if we like them, the next year we'll have some more. (laughs) Well, if Dad gets mad at you for not having turkey, I'm going to tell him why. Oh, uh, that's another thing, Betty. I don't want you to tell your father anything. Don't tell anybody. I did it. I'm glad I did it, but I don't have to advertise it. Ah, that's the nicest thing I ever heard, darling. For that, I'm going to give you a great big kiss. (laughs) There. (laughs) Well, Mel, say something. Such a kiss for a 15-pound turkey? (laughs) Yes. Gosh, I wish it had been 50 pounds. (laughs) Well, if it isn't our lodge secretary, Earl Ross. Hey, how are you feeling, Brother Ross? Ah, potato salad. Oh, yeah, Betty made it. Say, uh, why don't you try some? Well, just a small plate. I don't want to spoil my appetite. Mmm, 
Brown. Delicious. <laughs> Pass the olives, Mel. No, not the green one. It's a pitch to a green one. <laughs> See, uh, why don't you have another sandwich? No, thanks. I've already had two. <laughs> I've already had four, but who's counting? <laughs> Go on, have another one. Oh, here comes Father Mel. Say, who's that fellow with him? Oh, that's Willie Murdoch. Father just hired him to manage the supermarket. He's rather nice. Rather nice? Betty, have you gone out with him? Well, Father insisted that I go to the movies with him last night. You and Willie at the movies? Dark places? (laughs) Betty, why didn't you tell me? Well, darling, it's Thanksgiving, and I didn't want to upset you. Now, you be nice to him. Uh, Hello, Mel. (laughs) Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, happy Thanksgiving, Mr. Colby. Oh, Mel, I want you to meet my new manager, Willie Murdoch. Hello, Mr. Murdoch. Hello, Blank. Heard a lot about you from Mr. Colby. <laughs> Don't let it get you down. <laughs> Willie, this is Mr. Ross, secretary of our loyal order of benevolent zebras. Mr. Ross is a very good friend of mine. Oh, well, Mr. Colby, any good friend of yours is a good friend of mine. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Ross. Pass you musty. <laughs> This is a very nice fix-it shop you got here, Blank, but I've got a couple of ideas to improve it. First of all, it's too stuffy in here. Well, it could use a little air conditioning. Blank, you can't condition this air. You gotta get rid of it. <laughs> and next, you take down that picture of the city dump on the wall. Murdoch, that's no picture. You're looking through the window. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, I see Miss Colby is unattached. Better go over and attach myself. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving. Why couldn't the Pilgrim Fathers have landed on him? Oh, it's Zuki. Oh, hello, Zuki. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> hello, Zuki. Oh, hello. Betty. Thanks. <laughs> Say, uh, how do you like my new dress, Zuki? <laughs> Oh, uh, gosh, Betty, you're the most beautiful... Uh, 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 you're the quintessence of love, uh, lovely... Uh, 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 you're the acme of... Perf- uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, by the way, Zookie, I got a letter from my cousin Dottie and a new picture of her. Here, look. <laughs> Cousin Dottie is so shy and sweet and coy. What do you think of her bathing suit? <laughs> Zuki, can I get you a little something before dinner? What would you like? I'd like some uh, potato here. So, so, uh, I'd like some cu- 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 uh, cu- 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 uh, some candy there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd like that picture of Dottie. <laughs> Say, Betty, did you know that Mel invited us here for Thanksgiving dinner and there's no turkey? Well, you're right, Mr. Colby. Mel invited us for Thanksgiving dinner and there's no turkey. Why, Thanksgiving isn't Thanksgiving without turkey. That's exactly my thought, Mr. Colby. Thanksgiving isn't Thanksgiving without turkey. Huh. Uh, This guy can easily uh, be uh, be replaced with a sheet of carbon paper. (laughs) I tell you, this is preposterous. Zookie, where's Mel? Oh, he he went back to the uh, uh, kitchen. Oh. Well, I want to talk to him. And Murdoch, uh, Willie, you take care of Betty. Oh, well, if you say so, Mr. Colby. Anything you say goes, Mr. Colby. I'm your boy, Mr. Colby. You know you can count on me, Mr. Colby. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> ha, Uh-uh, Mel is in a jam again. Uh, I gotta go and explain everything to you. Uh, I gotta go and, and, and warn you. Uh, I gotta go and it, 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 it tip him all of it. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> dates for you this festive season? Could a breath of trouble be the reason? Maybe because that breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, has brought unhappiness to thousands, 
Don't let it mark you down. Just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing, and remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Now, Victor Miller, the sportsman, and their holiday arrangement of Good Night Ladies. Thanksgiving party in his fix-it shop to get in the good graces of his girl's father, Mr. Colby. But so far, everything is going wrong. Mr. Colby is mad because there's no turkey. Willie Murdoch, the new supermarket manager, is making a play for Mel's girl. Right now, the party is in full swing, but we find Mel disconsolately talking to Betty's kid brother, Tommy, in a corner of the shop. Boy, is my dad sore at you, Mel. Yeah, Tommy, and I gave this party just to make an impression on him. What can I do to please your father? Mel, I know something you can do that'll surely please him. You do? What is it? No, you're too young to die. <laughs> well, anyway, my pop is mad at you for having salami instead of a turkey at this party. Yeah, I know. Mel, why don't you tell my pop you gave the turkey to the orphan's home? Oh, you keep out of this, Tommy. The reason I'm not saying anything is because this year, your father forgot to give them a turkey himself. And if I said anything about it, it would only embarrass him. Oh. Oh, Mel... Here comes our large president, Mr. Cushing. Oh. Good, I'll go over and welcome him. Holiday greetings, Brother Blank. <laughs> greetings, mighty potentate. How are things? Wonderful. Happiest Thanksgiving I ever had. Well, where's the wife? Home in bed with laryngitis. <laughs> Happiest Thanksgiving I ever had. Gee, that's too bad. How's she feeling? Darn that penicillin. <laughs> Say, how did she get laryngitis? Well, Mel, we went to the UCLA-USC football game. Little woman went completely berserk, kept screaming her head off. She did? Yeah, it was the first opportunity she ever had to yell at 22 men all at once. <laughs> you mean now she can't talk at all? Not a word. She just lies there in bed and hisses. <laughs> Empty the garbage pail, shake out the carpet sweeper, clean up the kitchen. I wish she wouldn't tell me what to do. I have my own system for doing the housework. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Cushing, it must be tough living with your wife. Mel, if you only knew. 
Last night we went out and she said, Look at me, John, I'm dressed up to kill. <laughs> Gad, what a temptation. <laughs> Tell you, Mel, I'd leave that woman in a minute if she didn't have all that money. <laughs> I don't know why I'm standing here telling you all this. It's just that I've got it all in the dark, <laughs> Oh, cheer up, Mr. Cushing. When you get your wife a Christmas present, everything will be okay. Well, she's already hinted about a present. She wants some beauty aid. Ha! <laughs> Now, Mr. Cushing, after all, beauty is only skin deep. Mel, she's already been peeled. <laughs> the nerve of that woman. She asked me for a beauty makeup kit. Well, what are you going to get her? With her face, a box of Dr. Scholl's foot pads. <laughs> Nothing helped that woman, Mel. Well, I have to let you in for another disappointment, mighty potentate. Huh? I haven't any turkey. What a relief. You're happy not to see a turkey? Mel, are you forgetting? I've been looking at my wife all day. <laughs> well, on to the party. Oh, I see Brother Colby here. Greetings, Brother Colby. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. Oh, greetings, mighty potent aid. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. And there's Brother Ross. Greetings, Brother Ross. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo. Pass us all ugga. <laughs> and little Tommy. Ugga, ugga, boo, ugga. All right, Mr. Cushing, all right. Mm. Well, I'm sorry. Sort of run away with Margaboos, huh? <laughs> all right, come on, everybody. Let's all have fun. Uh, does anybody want to hear me impersonate Charles Boyer? All right, I'll sing a song. Uh, anybody hear the story about the cop in Brooklyn? Shall I sing now? Well, you've never heard this story before. Is it about the cop finding the dead horse on Kosciuszko Avenue? Uh-huh. And he can't say Kosciuszko, so he moves the horse to Main Street? Shall I sing now? No! I'll tell another one, and I know you don't know this story. Uh, a fellow was having soup in a restaurant, and he called over the head waiter. See here, sir, he exclaimed. There's a fly in this soup. And what do you think the head waiter said? Did he say, what do you want for a diamond elephant? <laughs> yes, and I wish you'd drop dead. I'll try one more story now. All right, everybody quiet now. Mr. Colby's going to try one more story. Go ahead, Mr. Colby. Now, everybody keep quiet. Thanks, Myrtle. Thanks. Well, it... <laughs> it seems a man in a restaurant called uh, the waitress over and said, My cocoa is cold. Well, replied the waitress, if your cocoa is cold, put your hat on it. <laughs> oh, very funny. Very, very funny. <laughs> Shall I sing now, Mr. Colby? Oh, I've had enough from you, Mel Blank. You've ruined my entire evening. His entire evening. Father, let's... And you've got a nerve inviting people to a Thanksgiving party and not even having any turkey. Yeah, not having any turkey. But, Father... Hey, when do we eat? I'm starved. <laughs> That's a good idea. Come on, Father, let's eat. Uh, no, all right. Okay, everybody, sit down now. Uh, there's a Fine, yes. Uh, this food looks wonderful. Yes, no home cooking. <laughs> well, everybody see that? Yeah, let's go. Okay. I'll, I'll carve the salami. <laughs> Who wants a leg? I do. I do. I do. Everybody wants a leg. I should have gotten an octopus. <laughs> I'd rather have turkey. Colby, will you stop? Everyone knows salami is much safer than turkey. Safer? Yes, no bones. Oh. <laughs> well, Tommy, what part do you want? Yeah, I want the part that goes over the counter last. <laughs> and how about you, Brother Ross? Well, I don't know. I'm losing my appetite. <laughs> just give me the dark meat. The salami is all dark meat. That's what I said. Just give me the dark meat. <laughs> oh, Murdoch. Huh? What part do you want? I always let Mr. Colby choose first. All right, Mr. Colby, what part uh, would you like? Oh, this has gone too far. I refuse to sit here and be made a fool of. Oh, but Mr. Colby... Well, this can't go on any longer. I'm going to tell Father. Betty, please. Huh? Tell me why. Why we haven't any turkey tonight. Oh, come in. Is Mr. Blank here? I'm Mel Blank, little boy. Mr. Blank, I'm from the orphan's home. I brought you a piece of your turkey. You did? Yes. It tasted so good, all the boys wanted you to have some. <clears throat> They wanted me to tell you how much they appreciated you remembering them on Thanksgiving Day. Gee, thanks. They also asked me to give a message from all the boys at the home. 
you mind if I give it? No, no, go ahead. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Mel Blank, Mel Blank, hooray! <laughs> Thanks a lot. So long, Mr. Blank. So long. Oh, gee, wasn't that sweet? Mel. You gave your turkey to the orphanage? Oh, why didn't you tell us about it? Well, you're right again, Mr. Colby. Mel Blank, why didn't oh, you tell us? Oh, shut up! <laughs> well, Mel, uh, he didn't want to tell you because you forgot to give your turkey this year. What? Why, well, I always give a turkey to the orphanage. In fact, I told Willie Murdoch... To... Murdoch, didn't you deliver that? Uh, 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 Mr. Colby, it, <laughs> it, it slipped my mind. Oh, it I... did, did it. Murdoch, come here. I'm going to break every bone in your body. Quiet, everybody. Mr. Colby's going to break every bone in his body. <laughs> Gee, it sounds good on somebody else. <laughs> oh, forget it, Mr. Colby. It's Thanksgiving. Let's forgive. Uh, yes, you're right, Mel. Yeah, let's forgive and let's eat. <laughs> All right, here. Sit next to me, Mel, my son. Thanks, Pop. Uh, oh, uh, uh, ah, nothing like the smell of salami on Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, you see, Betty, it's like I said. What difference does it make, salami or turkey? It's the spirit of Thanksgiving that counts. <laughs> this is Mel Blanc saying Happy Thanksgiving, and uh, the 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> This is Bud Houston reminding you that Colgate Tooth Powder for Breath of Sweet and Cheap Sparkle brings you the Mel Blanc Show every Tuesday at this time. Be sure and join us again next Tuesday night for more fun with Mel and the people you'll meet in Mel Blanc's Fix-It Shop. Say hello to Halo Shampoo for naturally bright and beautiful hair. Remember, even finest soaps and soap shampoos hide the natural luster of your hair with dulling soap film. But Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather, quickly banishes loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. <laughs> Columbia Broadcasting System.